An apartment complex reduced to rubble. Search and rescue efforts underway after the 12 story building suddenly collapsed overnight. After voters greenlit police reform measures in November, the city of San Diego is drafting new policies. But activists say someone gutted the original proposal. What they say is missing. And the Holiday Bowl has a new home. How organizers plan to bring it to Petco Park and what that could mean for the gas land. ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. Hello there. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Virginia Cha. And I'm Jim Patton. Welcome. We want to get right to this major story that is developing in Miami-Dade County this morning. At least one person killed, dozens unaccounted for, after part of a 12-story condo complex collapsed. Yeah, this happened while people were asleep overnight. And as the sun rose this morning, new haunting images show the aftermath. Much of the building reduced to rubble. Right now, crews are canvassing the area looking for survivors. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest on the collapse and the search now underway. The massive search and rescue efforts continue in Surfside, Florida, just north of Miami Beach, after a condominium building partially collapsed early Thursday morning. We had a 12-story, 136-unit uh, apartment complex that uh, had sustained a partial collapse. The northeast corridor of the apartment had uh, collapsed, approximately 55 apartment units. The Miami-Dade Fire Rescue says more than 80 units were sent to the scene. They've actually gone into that building. That building is in imminent danger of collapsing, potentially, and they're up there looking for people in the building. So those guys, those are real heroes. First responders rescuing a young man from the rubble using a bucket to take people off their balconies. Still have people standing upstairs that don't need to be evacuated. Barry Cohen thought it was a thunderstorm. We opened up the door from our apartment and there was a huge pile of rubble and dust. When we got to the bottom of the stairs, we couldn't open the door because the door was the steel had bent in the door. The collapse sent a cloud of debris throughout the neighborhood. Cars as far as two blocks away coated with dust. There's a third of the entire building that you cannot see from the street, but it's completely gone in the back towards the beach side. Nicholas Fernandez owns two units in the building. Three close friends were staying in one of those condos. I know for a fact that my unit is no lo it doesn't longer exist. I'm not even concerned about my, my unit. I, I, I don't care. It's material. I just want them to be good. Officials say they're concerned about approaching storms contributing to a potential secondary collapse at the building and within the debris pile. They add they still don't know how many people could still be trapped. Rena Roy, ABC News. And here at home, back in November, San Diegans voted for Measure B to create a more robust commission on police practices. The city has come up with a plan, but one group who supported the measure says the new proposal by the city is misleading. ABC 10 News reporter Nate Holmes joining us live from downtown. And Nate, the group says that the, everything they asked for is not in this proposal. Jim, 75% of San Diego voters voted for Measure B, which would create a commission on police practices. The city drafted up a proposal, but the group San Diego Justice says that everything they had originally asked for in the Measure B was gutted out by those authors. Who are we? We are the 75%. The group says their top three requests in Measure B were not included in the city's ordinance. Measure B required independent legal counsel for the commission, subpoena power, and it also required robust investigations, all of which the group says the city's current proposal does not have. In this proposed ordinance, it has defined the term investigation so loosely that it, in effect, doesn't even really require an investigation. The proposed ordinance doesn't even mention independent legal counsel or legal counsel at all. San Diego Justice is also demanding that the Commission on Police Practices be community-led. They would like the residents of San Diego to decide who will be a part of the board. The group submitted a 45-page proposal to overhaul the ordinance as it's currently written to revert it back to what they say was its original intent. The plan is being taken up by a subcommittee this morning before it would even be finalized by the full city council. We ask that after you have time to fully consider all this input, that in a subsequent PSNLM meeting, you direct the city attorney to make revisions to the draft as you deem appropriate. 
let's get it right. At today's meeting, over 20 people called in to the committee meeting voicing their opinions and asking the committee to hold off on voting and consider making changes to the ordinance. Well, the committee meeting is underway. Council member Monica Montgomery says she is very interested in reading the draft presented to the board uh, this morning by the group in downtown. Nate Holmes, ABC 10 News. Thank you, Nate. Right now, a court ordered cleanup is underway in the Bay Terraces neighborhood. Crews clearing out what they're calling a hoarder property on Mesa Hills Court. That's after the San Diego City Attorney stepped in, requesting permission to take action. The City Attorney's Office says this house was more than just an eyesore, that it had become a, quote, hazardous situation. Neighbors say, among other things, trash piled up inside and out would start to smell on hot days. The city says the resident was living without running water for two years. As the city works to clean and restore that house, they say they are also going to offer assistance to the resident. Hmm. Now, the effort to recall Governor Gavin Newsom is moving forward. Secretary of State announcing only 43 people chose to withdraw their signature from the recall petition leaving a certified total of more than 1.7 million verified signatures. California law allows a 30-day period for voters to request to remove their signatures. Well, next, the state's finance department will estimate the cost of the recall and must submit it for review. A date for the recall election has yet to be set. Well, they've made it official. The Holiday Bowl has found a new home at Petco Park. ABC 10 News reporter Marie Cornell is there live. Marie, this decision is the start of a number of firsts. At Virginia, this Holiday Bowl will have a brand new matchup in terms of conferences, and this will be the first time it will call Petco Park home. Now, during the news conference, Holiday Bowl representatives, the Padres and city leaders made it official. The Holiday Bowl will now be played at Petco Park, starting with this year's game, which will be on December 28th. And it will be a number of firsts. This will be the first time the Holiday Bowl won't be played in Mission Valley. This will also be the first time a football game is played at Petco Park. And this will also be the first time a team from the Pac-12 will play a team from the ACC in the Holiday Bowl. What won't be new is the revenue the Holiday Bowl is expected to bring to our area. It usually brings in at least $31 million to the local economy. To date, in its more than four decades, it's brought in $977 million, something they believe will continue as the Holiday Bowl settles in at Petco Park. Not only directs the eyeballs of the world to our city, which is a really good thing, but it also brings a lot of people to town and their credit cards. This also raises the question why this game isn't going to be played at the brand new Aztec Stadium in Mission Valley once it's built. Holiday Bowl officials say it's too small. For us to be able to continue to get Power Five conferences, get the ACC and the Pac-12, um, it, it's, it's, the team payouts are higher. And so we need to have that ticket revenue opportunity um, to be able to pursue that. If, and again, there's nothing against Aztec Stadium. It's going to be an awesome facility. Um, for us, this just works better. Tickets will go on sale to the public starting in September. Live outside of Petco Park, Marie Cornell, ABC 10 News. Marie, thank you very much for this morning. The White House moving to extend a national eviction moratorium by another month. It was set to expire next week. According to the National Low-Income Housing Coalition, six million families are behind on rent and are at risk of being without a home. The White House wants to buy more time to get federal rent relief money to tenants who need it. They say that way there won't be mass evictions once the moratorium ends. California has its own hold on evictions in place, and San Diego has its own, which won't be lifted until two months after the state ends its order. The CDC now says several hundred cases of a rare heart condition are likely linked to certain COVID vaccines. Those cases of myocarditis have been mostly in younger people. That is raising some concerns, especially as parents wait to find out if schools will require vaccinations. Health experts, though, are urging parents not to panic and not to put off getting their children vaccinated because the risks of contracting COVID, including myocarditis from COVID, can be much worse. Dr. Abby Olalade explained what happened with those who came down with myocarditis. 
the majority of cases are actually mild and most people get better. And even when they need treatment, they are very responsive to the treatment. The FDA plans to add a new warning label to the Pfizer and Moderna mRNA vaccines, cautioning people to watch out for signs connected to the rare heart inflammation.